Hi everybody, I just got back from my second range session with my new 6-hour SP2022. I've been very happy with this purchase. It seems to not be getting a lot of attention on YouTube and other such things, and I wanted to bring this to your attention as a very affordable option from 6-hour. It's available in 9mm, 40 caliber, and I also think 357 SIG, and it's for traditional single action, double action with the decocker, just like on the SIG 226. One of the things that makes this unique, and I think the reason it's so affordable, is that this lower uh, frame down here is all polymer. The controls and levers are all steel. Of course, the slide and barrel is all steel. This is a completely polymer lower. It's a very affordable option if you want to have a SIG pistol. I really just wanted to have a SIG. I wanted to have the double action, single action mechanism as part of my collection because I, I didn't own any SIG sours yet. I looked at the 226 a bunch of the other SIGs that they had, and they just don't fit my hand. And I'm not going to buy a SIG just to buy a SIG to have something that I can't use effectively, can't reach the decocker easily. So this is a great addition to my collection, and at the price that they're charging, around or a little bit less than $400, depending on where you get it, uh, it's easy to say yes to that. This gun is um, kind of in between a full size and a compact gun. The barrel is about 3.8 inches, which is, you know, like on the MMP, that's four and a quarter inches, so it's a little bit shorter than that, but it's not quite as small as what you would call like a real compact gun or subcompact type concealed carry gun. So it's kind of in between the full size and subcompact. Uh, I think this might be a good option depending on what you're looking for. I'm not sure uh, exactly the comparison to a Glock 19. I've heard a lot of people compare it to a Glock 19, but I do not have one directly here to compare it with. This is a polymer frame lower, and I'm told that this upper is stainless steel. A magnet does definitely stick to it. Uh, the trigger lever is metal. Uh, your magazine release is metal. That sticks to a magnet. Um, and then all of your controls up here also are metal. So it's only this polymer lower here uh, that is the polymer. Of course, the magazine's metal also. The upper is what they call nitron coating, which is some sort of probably nitrocarburizing or nitron salt bath coating. This grip frame right here actually comes off. There's a button here you can slide this off, and the box came with the second grip frame. You can put this uh, larger grip frame on there. I haven't experimented with them, but I think there's just a normal or small size and then this larger size. I've been happy with the small size. I've kept that on there. The grip is textured, and it's uh, not quite like a sandpaper texture, but it's um, almost like the plastic has been upset, kind of like you do stippling with. So it's not a real aggressive sandpaper, but it does make a very good grip. Uh, you've got the little pinky extension down there to get a full grip on there. You have to have the magazine in, otherwise my pinky slides off the end. Uh, but it's a very firm grip. I like that with this texturing. So it doesn't have the problem of being real slick plastic like some of the other polymer frames are. One of the reasons that I really wanted to get this SIG was because I've been experimenting around trying to get a SIG P226. And my problem is on a 226, I cannot reach the decocking lever easily with just one hand. It's become a real pain for me, and ergonomically, I just couldn't find anything that I liked in the uh, six hour lineup. Uh, they have some other compact options, like the compact companion to the 226, wasn't really working out for me. So when I found this, saw one in the store, I knew that this is really what I wanted. My hands fit around it easily, the grip is smaller, I can easily reach the decocker, it's no problem. So I can do that one handed, I don't have to reach over with my assisting thumb to hit the decocker like I would on a 226. Now I want to make a direct comparison to some of the other pistols which I tried, especially some of the other double action, single action SIGs, such as the 226E2. They make a new version called the E2, which is supposed to be a smaller grip diameter. It has like a smaller mainspring housing and it's got this plastic kind of clamshell one piece grip. You'll recognize it when you see it because most 226s actually have a two piece grip and they've got a seam down the middle where the two grip halves come together, whereas the 226E2 versions have like a one piece wraparound grip. I think that's how SIG's making all of their new pistols now. I've tried the SIG P226E2 version, and although it's supposed to be smaller, it still wasn't small enough for me to get my hand around, and I just wasn't comfortable with it. I still could not reach the decocking lever easily. So that's why eventually I went with this SIG 2022. It fits my hand a lot better. What I really like about it is, ergonomically, it's a very close fit to the MMP. I've got the MMP here with the small grip strap on the back. This fits my hand pretty well. The SIG 2022 gives me kind of that same similar grip. Uh, ergonomically. It's a little bit wider. I can tell it's wider this dimension, but I can still reach it to get around all the controls, which is big, big plus for me because uh, I kind of like the feel, like the MMP style feel, and this is what gives it to me in a double action, single action, six sour style package.
One of the problems you're going to run into when you get this is, like I said at the beginning of the video, it's kind of a little known pistol, lesser known pistol, so getting accessories for it is a little bit of a problem. One of the things I had to do was run around trying to find a holster. I originally tried a holster that was the Phobos holster for the XD, which they label as being compatible with the SIG. I'll show you a picture of that. It did not work out well. Uh, left the trigger guard exposed, left the trigger exposed from the side. Absolutely unacceptable to have a trigger partially exposed like that. So, luckily Blackhawk does make this Serpa holster, which is directly for a 2022, and uh, it costs just a little bit more than the Phobos, but as far as uh, having a holster option, this works really well. Locks in there good, releases with that Serpa style action. I've never really had a Serpa before. Um, of course, there's good and bad things that could be said about that. I'm not going to get into all that here. But as far as getting a good uh, plastic or polymer Kydex style holster, this is where it's at. I couldn't find anything else that worked really well. Uh, as far as leather holsters go, you can get holsters for the Springfield XD. I'm talking about not the XDM, but the regular XD. And this is a very close holster fit. So the Phobos holster, they actually primarily make it for the XD and they claim it'll fit the 2022 except for the trigger guard problem it would have fit so if you had a leather holster or uh, something like that and as long as it came up high enough to actually cover that trigger you should be okay with a XD Springfield XD style fit uh, like I said I haven't gone around and tried them all out so don't take my word for it but that may be a starting point for you if you're looking for accessories the magazines is another hot issue I'm going to talk about uh, as is common for Sig Sauer, they charge a lot of money for their magazines. Uh, it only came with this one magazine. That's all it came with, just the one. Uh, and this is 9mm, and I live in a free state, so it's 15 rounds. If you lived in a restricted state, it would be 10 rounds or whatever they are. Uh, and I think 40 caliber, of course, is going to be less. I'm not sure what those are. Uh, but magazines are going to be around $32 to $40 a piece. Uh, and you can also get some aftermarket magazines like from CDNN Catalog. Uh, there's a, a Metgar brand magazine that you can get. And it's not a flush fit. It's got an extension that sticks down. Uh, but it gives you, I think, uh, two extra capacity. That's about $30. Uh, I didn't want to experiment with that. I've, I've heard some people say there may be some fitment issues. Keep in mind that this is actually molded to go with the grip. It kind of gives you the full grip with that. So I was able to buy some extra magazines from Top Gun Supply. I looked around. They had the best price of all. Of course, I don't know when you're watching this video. You could be watching this video several months or a year later. So make sure you check around for the good prices. Uh, because they can vary wildly. I've seen some of them listed for $50 a piece, and that gets really expensive uh, as the time of making this video, which is uh, April of 2012. If you can get them for around $35, you're doing good. One of the main differences you're going to run into about the 2022 versus the 2009 or the 2340 is this rail. So I don't have a picture of another one to compare directly to you, but this is a full-size or standard size Picatinny rail. The earlier 2009s and 2320s had a very slim dust cover rail and uh, it's just like a thin slot that ran along here. They did not have these serrated teeth like this one has. Uh, so be careful of that when you're buying accessories and when you're looking for holster fit that's going to run into a problem because some of the formed Kydex holsters made for 2009 are expecting the slimmer dust cover and if you buy the 2022 that has the full size Picatinny rail you're going to run into a holster interference issue on the bottom rail. What I like is that the single action trigger is very crisp and I have compared this directly to a 226 or even a uh, 226E2 with the SRT short reset trigger and I think that this trigger is on par or as good as maybe a little bit better than them. I don't have a lot of experience with 226 but what I saw in the store was that the single action was very good. Their specs claim four pounds. Uh, if I shoot it more it should smooth out and be really good. I'm going to show you the, the trigger has to come pretty close to all the way back to actually trip in single action here. So bring this into the light so you can see it. All the way, almost all the way touching back to the polymer frame before it breaks. Double action the same way, it has to be touching all the way to the back before it breaks. Then the slide will cycle and then the reset is right there. Then you can go single action again. Slide cycles, reset right there single action again. So there's your trigger on that. Uh, like all double actions, it's uh, real hard, probably about 10 pounds right there. Uh, and some people may have trouble pulling that first double action pull if your finger's not very strong. So just be aware of that. Also takes some getting used to the fact that you have to make it go all the way 
to the very back of the frame before it releases. So if you have your trigger finger brought up here to where it's like the knuckle of your finger, then your, your it pad of your finger wraps around and you just can't squeeze hard enough to make it break because you've got some gap in your finger and you can't make the trigger go all the way back. You have to be pulling with the front very much tip or pad of your finger to get it to go back far enough to break and release the trigger. If you get too much trigger finger in there, you get a problem like that, you never be able to figure that out. So that's a training issue. You don't really have to use double action. Anytime that you rack the slide, you're going to start in single action. Of course, you decock it to go to your safe condition. That's kind of your safety right there. You just decock into double action. The other thing that I really like about this is the slide to barrel fit. And I'm going to make sure that this is empty, just like I did before the video, but I'm going to turn it around to look at the slide to barrel fit. If you look right here, there is no perceptible movement between the barrel and the slide. There's nothing loose at all right there. I can't get any noise or anything to come out of it. I can't make it rattle around loose. They have made this thing very tight and I really like that. It's a very good fit. So even though it's a 3.8 inch barrel uh, that you're kind of uh, you know not like a full length what you would call full size like a 4 inch barrel I can shoot pretty accurately with it. Uh, if you compare it to something like the MMP9 which I've been uh, shooting a lot lately there's definitely some side to side, I don't know if you can see that, but I can kind of make it go side to side a little bit. I can feel it go a little bit side to side there in the barrel to slide interference there. So uh, this is made tight. They did a real good job on it quality wise. And it handled a variety of ammunition from full metal jackets, of course uh, jacketed hollow points, molly coated, lead reloads, other stuff like that. Didn't have any problems at all any of the range ammo that I tried. Of course all pistols being new there could be a fluke from the factory something wrong or maybe a little bit of break-in period. Uh, this one I've been lucky I didn't run into any of that. Thumb placement can be problematic. This is one of the things I don't like about the way they did this. This disassembly, this is a slide stop and combination disassembly lever and it takes up a lot of space on the side of the pistol here so if you're used to a 1911 style high ride grip can't do that because you'll be riding this slide stop. It'll prevent the slide from locking open on the last shot. So after your last shot, your slide will cycle in and you'll get the click at the end. Likewise, if your thumb is in here and it's pushing up on this, you'll get an early slide lock open. The slide will lock open when there's still rounds in the magazine. So that's a little bit of an issue. I was very concerned when I got the pistol that that would be a problem, but after a little bit of practice, I was able to get my thumb to lay down or roll my thumb under or whatever you have to do to get that thumb out of the way and I have not had an issue with that but I just that's one of the things I wish they had done something different to where this large bar wasn't in the way but uh, like I said I, I was concerned but a little bit of shooting and uh, I didn't have any problem with it. The sight picture on this thing is different than what I'm used to what I would like to see. Uh, in this case I painted the front sight with some fluorescent paint but they were all three dot white sights. There is an option for night sights it's not what this one is. This one is just the contrast sights. Uh, the way they did it on the SIG 2022 and I, I guess this is common to all, all of these pistols. I don't know if I just got one that was weird like this. The bullet will impact pretty much right here. So it's not a 6 o'clock hold where your bullet would impact above the front sight. Sometimes you hear bullseye shooters talk about a 6 o'clock hold where the bullet impacts up here. Or you put the bullseye right on top of the front sight like you're dotting the eye. That's not the case here. It's going to impact behind this front sight. And so in a lot of cases you're shooting, if you're shooting with only one eye open, the bullet impacts will be below the front sight and you can't see the hit on paper until you lower the gun and then see the bullet impact. Um, that's probably not a critical issue, it's, it just means that uh, you have to be aware of that when you're shooting. Uh, it's just not what I'm used to. I may try to change out the front sight. SIG sells different heights, so this is a this right here is a number 8 size, so if I change that out to a different number it would increase or decrease the front sight height and then I could get my 6 o'clock hold like I'm used to. The other thing you need to be aware of is that this grip is a little bit short so without without the magazine inserted the pinky can kind of roll off the edge right here. So this is, goes back to what I said about this being not quite a full-size pistol but not quite a compact pistol. It's kind of in between. A large part of your grip is actually made up by this base pad on the magazine. That's an unfortunate thing you got to watch out for if you're pinky rolls underneath here and you're trying to change magazines real quick, bam, you're going to get pinched right there. That's something to be aware of. Rolling that pinky out of the way, then you slam magazine and you're back to having a full grip. 
Uh, I kind of wish SIG had done something differently on that. I wish they had made this part of the grip and have the magazine just have a small base plate. I don't know what they were thinking, but it's just the way it is. Be aware of that. The main reason I'm making this video and I wanted to get the word out is that this SIG is very affordable. I don't exactly have the flyer here, but I bought this one from CDNN Sports Catalog. And it was on sale for less than 400 bucks. The prices are always going to vary, so I don't want to state an exact price. But basically, right at or under $400, very good value compared to a SIG 226, which is going to cost you about 75% or 80% more than that, maybe almost twice if you paid retail. In summary, let me explain what this is and what it isn't. This is not a full-size competition pistol. That is not what it's trying to be. So if you expect to use it in competition, you can, I'm not saying you can't. Uh, just be aware that uh, your barrel's a little bit shorter, you got 3.8 inches, so sight radius is going to be a little bit shorter, uh, all that sort of thing. So, I mean, you can use it. I mean, it's not like it's that much shorter. If I compare these two side by side, let's see if I can show this. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to show right there. The SIG is definitely a little bit shorter. Uh, it's not critical. I mean, the SIG is still accurate, accurate enough for most kind of short range competitions if you do that. Uh, so if it's comfortable for you and that's what you like, that's fine, more power to you. I'm just saying it's never claimed to be a competition gun. It's not like an XDM 5.25 or anything like that. With this double action, single action, and not having any sort of manual flip on, flip off safety, it's easy to carry and store safely and then put into action quickly. So if it's loaded, you decock it, then you're in a safe condition, you can still fire just by pulling the trigger with that double action pull. Because of that, I think it'd be good for a lot of scenarios, maybe like uh, home defense or a truck gun or something like that. Uh, of course, a lot of people do like the striker fired option, and uh, that's just kind of two different worlds of thought there. If you like the striker fired, if you like a double action, single action, you know, this kind of makes you, this forces you to have to make a very deliberate 10 pound double action pull to make your first shot off. Then after that, you're back to single action. This course is always going to be the same trigger pull every time being a striker fire gun. So there's a philosophy difference there. I mean, I'm sure it'll be debated till the end of time. As a home defense option, also, uh, it has have the standard, industry standard Picatinny rail, so you could mount the light or laser to the front rail if you wanted to. You can mount the light up here, you could get a Crimson Trace laser grip for the back, and so then you'd have a light and laser combination. Uh, like I said, you can load it, you decock it, keep it in a lockbox, and uh, it's ready to go if you need it. Now I'm going to break off for a little bit on a tangent and talk about the double action, single action mechanism and what I like about the Sig Sauer design, the way they did it, versus some of the other options. I don't have many other double action, single actions to talk about, so I'm going to talk about the Walther P1. This is going to be kind of a reference that I'm going to use as a stand-in for most of the other modern double action, single actions, this is being one of the first uh, in semi-auto form. Uh, basically, the way this works is very similar to what the Breda 92 did later. They have a frame or a slide mounted safety which is actually a hammer drop safety decocker so from fire you go to safe the hammer drops uh, but then you're on safe you've got this toggle button still you got this toggle lever still you still cannot fire from this condition uh, you've got a dead trigger you have to flip this up to fire then you can fire in the double action configuration so the bread of 92 and uh, the Smith & Wesson 5906s and a lot of others like the, the Ruger double action, single actions have this slide mounted hammer drop safety and I really do not like that. I do not like that I'm decocking the pistol but also doing a manual safety that I have to remember to flip this up before I can fire double action. In my mind, for a double action, single action pistol, the only thing you should have to do to safe the pistol is to decock it and the only thing you should have to do to put the pistol back into service in an emergency situation is to make that first double action pull. So this way I don't have any other extra slides, extra safety on off fire safe kind of thing to fool with. You know, you decock, that's it, you're ready to go. In conclusion, I think it's a very solid firearm at a very reasonable price. Uh, it's got a little bit of trouble with the accessories, making sure that you can get a holster and all that sort of thing. Magazines are a little bit pricey, being SIG, but if you look around you can get a good price. Uh, so overall I think it Makes a great option if you're looking for a SIG and uh, you need something that fits small hands or you need something that's a more affordable option, uh, this is pretty good. 